Hey guys, what's happening? It's uh, coming up on 6 o'clock on October 30th. We have some thunderstorms that are already underway in Kansas. They move across the Arkansas-Oklahoma border around midnight, give or take. Probably first in northwest Arkansas, close to midnight, probably closer to 1 or 2 in the Fort Smith area. The line of storms probably is strong early on, and then as it moves east, it fades and it weakens. But along the leading edge, you'll get those those spin-up tornadoes that we don't like, right? You Typically, they're on the weaker side, but that's our main risk tonight, that and wind damage. So let's take a look and see what's going on. First things first, severe outlook. Let's see the updated one. We've got a severe thunderstorm uh, outlook here for most of Kansas and the enhanced. That's the uh, orange color, the orange color in Oklahoma as well. You can see it fades to more of a yellow in Arkansas and then trends to a green as we start to see those things start to, to come on down. So here's what's happening. thought we'd take a look at, at the big picture of what's going on here and uh, look at some severe weather parameters here so you can see the trough right here that's where that line is uh, right in the middle and that's also where those showers and storms are starting to break on out as far as the instability goes looks like it's maximized right now in southeast Oklahoma um, as well as up through Kansas you can see it does fall off here as we move from the west to the east and the upper level wind chart also shows that trough that's swinging in so there it is right there and those upper level winds really what what's interesting about these jet streaks is the uh, the left front and the right rear quadrant is where the lift is the the right front and uh, the left rear is where you're going to have the subsidence or the sinking air so as we get into this in the overnight hours we're going to see some more of that uplift and have that chance of some showers and storms to move on in uh real quick let's look at super health supercell composite index a little high right here in south kansas as well as north oklahoma and uh significant tornado parameters looking good in east oklahoma eastern parts of kansas let will take a look maybe we can look at uh shear zero to one let's look at surface to three Looks like it's maximized here. This is a, a look at where the uh, spin is highest in the atmosphere. So you have a lot of wind shear that's up there. Uh, pretty sheared environment, which is going to lead to some uh, damaging wind potential during the overnight and even possibly uh, the risk of some spin up tornadoes on the leading edge of the line. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about what's happening now. That's a live look that's out there. That's from Embassy. Actually, that's from Walton looking south towards Embassy, out towards Hunt Towers and uh, Top Golf. Pretty nice evening. Man, it is windy though. Of course, it's all that dust and everything else that's nasty that's been blowing around. There are some severe thunderstorm warnings that are already in effect in central Oklahoma. Those are out there uh, just south of Wichita. Kind of lines up with what we just saw on the severe weather stuff, that doesn't it? Out around Wichita, back to the south. Uh, notice it's about 75 degrees in Springdale, about 76 in Rogers. Flip side of the front, though, Hayes, Kansas, down to 50, uh, already down to 56 here out towards Medicine Lodge in southwest Kansas. Uh, Wichita is already down to the 60s. So you have that warm air ahead of it. You've got the cool air behind it. And you got the storms uh, right in the middle. Pretty much what you'd expect, right? For this, uh, well, maybe not for this time of year, but for a storm system that's moving through. Look at Doppler radar here. Shows those showers and storms continuing to track in. Uh, looks like there was a wind gust reported at 59 miles an hour in uh, just north of Enid. Also seeing a wind gust of 60 miles an hour. That's a train spotter blowing debris. Um, uh, highway 166 and 11th road. Also got one inch hail as a storm report so these things are having it they do have a history of some severe weather that's probably going to keep on throughout the uh, overnight hours tonight too until it starts to weaken another wide view here of the showers and storms let's animate this and put this in motion here and zoom out a little so uh, there's the, the showers and storms just to the west. This is a composite view, so um, it's it's taking all of them together. We get closer to storm tracking when they get closer. We'll turn it on to single site. There's the front. You can see it, uh, the low pressure north of Topeka. Got another one there just west of Wichita where some of the stronger ones are. I really think this area here is primed for that stronger uh, thunderstorms as that, uh, that upper level wind uh, jet streak moves over it, and then you're also looking at the hand, enhanced instability, strong south winds, strong upper level winds. You got the good turning with height. That's probably where we're going to see the strongest storms. All this garbage will eventually turn into a line. So once that line gets going and moves east, it's less of a uh, tornado threat and more of a damaging wind threat. And that probably happens. Uh, a bit later on tonight. So this is the uh, high resolution rapid refresh data. And uh, I thought we'd just go hour through hour through this uh, for the evening. So this is coming up on uh, where are we at seven o'clock or so. So all right, that's where the stuff is moving through six by seven. It's going to be east to Enid moving into Stillwater. It starts to form into that line later on tonight as we get close to about nine, 10 o'clock. You can see it starting to move in and then it starts to arrive in the area somewhere close to about 11 or midnight. That's 
uh, close to midnight here. You can see the line pushing through. Strongest across parts of the Ozarks, weakest across southeast uh, Oklahoma into the Washita's, and then the line fades. It's a quick line, though, guys. This isn't the big soaking rain that we we really need, but hey, I mean, take all you can get, right? So that line just comes ripping through here. It's gone by, uh, man, it's gone early. Let's see, that's 7 o'clock, 6, 5, 4. Uh, it's probably out of here by 3 or 4 in the morning, maybe in Fort Smith around 2 still. And then back to the west, it should push into northwest of Benton County uh, somewhere probably closer to midnight, 11 o'clock midnight at the earliest as it starts to track on through. So severe weather risk area it does highlight uh, East Kansas, North Oklahoma. That's probably the best shot at seeing some of those strong uh, two severe thunderstorms. Probably going to keep an eye on it tonight. Hey, we haven't had much weather in a long time. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I mean, we've had a month of no severe weather at all, no rain at all. So it's nice to get the rainfall. Uh, just a quick heads up and a warning, too. For you guys that have um, had a lot of limbs down in that last big tornado in May, we didn't have a whole lot of wind events over the summer. So if there's some branches that are barely hanging and they could get pulled down in some gusty winds um, that move through. So that's just something to keep in mind as the line moves through. Again, rough and tumble tonight around midnight or so. Moves on out pretty quick. Main risk is damaging winds, followed by a small tornado risk on the leading edge. Hail, I don't think, is going to materialize as much. Once these things get linear, it's just hard to get the hail going in them. So when we get the line going, the hail threat goes way down. Uh, tornado threat's leading edge of this, and then the damaging wind threat's also leading edge. And it's an in and out type system. It's not the good soaking rain. I think we're probably going to get maybe about a half inch or so out of this if we're lucky. Some places won't even see that. It's a fast one, but it looks like there's more storms that are moving into the area later on uh, this weekend. So uh, those thunderstorms are probably going to be more of a heavy rain producer by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday. I'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens later on tonight. And I'll keep you guys posted. Have a good evening.